The rapid growth of learning that occurred during the Renaissance was made possible by the availability of large numbers of inexpensive books. In medieval times, books like the one seen here were painstakingly copied by hand, a page at a time, usually by Catholic monks living in monasteries. Almost all books were written in Latin, the language of ancient Rome, and of the Roman Catholic Church, a tongue that was no longer spoken. In medieval times, books were quite rare, and not something likely to be found in an ordinary person's home. However, in Germany around 1450, a man named Johannes Gutenberg came up with a clever way of avoiding the tedious process of hand copying. He developed a technique for making movable type, special metal letters used for printing that could be rearranged as desired in order to create words and sentences. Printers stored movable type letters of many different sizes and styles in well-organized type cases like these. Letters from the upper case and the lower case were arranged or typeset into sentences for each page. Then, on a printing press like this one, ink was applied and the page was printed out. Gutenberg's speedy new method made the hand copying of books unnecessary. By 1500, movable type was being used by printers all across Europe, and they were producing new books by the tens of thousands, mostly in regional languages, instead of just in Latin. Having mass-produced books meant that the latest works of literature and science could reach people rapidly compared to the days of hand copying. And because books became more affordable, a much larger number of people began to learn how to read and write as well. One of the most important Renaissance figures to see his ideas spread by mass-produced books was a German priest and professor named Martin Luther. Luther was the leader of the Reformation, a religious movement that led to the birth of Protestantism. In the early 1500s, Luther had become increasingly concerned about what he believed were corrupt practices in the Catholic Church, practices that he thought went against biblical teaching. In 1517, he posted his thoughts, called the 95 Theses, to the door of a church here in the town of Wittenberg, Germany, for all to read. In this document, Luther particularly questioned the church's practice of selling indulgences. These were special pardons for the church's punishments for committing sins that sometimes were granted for a cash payment. Luther also made known his belief that popes and church councils could, and often did, make mistakes in religious matters. Luther asked for reform, but he was excommunicated or banned from the Catholic Church instead. In this great cathedral in the city of Worms, Germany, Luther was brought before a group of clergymen and nobles. He was ordered to withdraw his proposals for reform. Luther refused to do so and ended up going his own way. Many people believed that Luther had been correct, and they began to follow his teachings. Soon the first Protestant denominations of Christianity, such as Lutheranism and Calvinism, began to form. The Protestants refused to accept the Pope as their leader. They discarded many Catholic beliefs, focused on biblical teachings, and on the development of a more personal relationship with God. The Protestant movement was subjected to brutal repression in certain nations throughout the later part of the Renaissance. It led to immigration and was a major factor in several wars.